What's going on, Cartelitos? So today we're going to talk about the infamous N-word and how I feel about it. I actually made a video about this thing about, um, I don't know, eight months ago, maybe less, maybe more. doesn't really matter, but I'll bring it up for a certain reason. Back then, I was actually more inclined to accept it. I even said that I would use it from time to time as a word of camaraderie, uh, you know, in front of certain homies and, uh, and, and thought it was okay. But as time went on, I started seeing more of like, like the social media thing going on, the videos going on, like music videos and stuff like that. And started to see how lost my culture is becoming, man. It's, uh, it's becoming to a point where people, especially Rasa, they have almost lost every bit of identity that they've ever known. I'm talking about the young guys, man. Um, you may sit there and say that uh, it's not that big a deal. It's, uh, it's just a word. And even to African Americans, brother, after reading that uh, Malcolm X book that, uh, that my man sent to me, it actually opened up a lot of, uh, a lot of things that I didn't look at as before, man. Uh, when I was reading more into that book, Malcolm X became very well loved, very well uh, accepted in the African American community, even after being a criminal, a pimp, a... Uh, I think he got arrested for um, for doing robberies in, in white homes. And actually, the, the thing that got him the most time wasn't even the robbery. It was the fact that he is, uh, his crew uh, were um, also uh, made of uh, two white ladies that him and his boy were, you know, having sex with. And that was probably the worst part of it that the white people just couldn't understand. They, they, they sat there pretty much said, oh, you're robbing homes, but what are you doing with these white women? That was worse. That was the worst crime than robbing the homes and doing all the other stuff they were doing. And what I started seeing by reading this book and by seeing a lot of the phrases that was going on back then, the word nigga is just as bad as the word nigger, brother. It's sad, but it's almost like the hustle has been to the black man, not to the brown man. They sit there and say, nah, man, we, uh, we've got the word and we made it our own. And that couldn't be the farthest thing from the truth, man. The word nigger, when they used it, and they still use it, you know, some racists, they use it to be racial. They use it to make you less of a man. They use it to make you more of an animal, make you part of the cattle. It, it, they use it to, to dehumanize you, brother. You know, that's what the white man used it for. And what happened within time, the white man was calling the black man this for so many years and so many centuries that the black man started picking it up. But the black man started saying nigga. And eventually it came to a point where it's normal to a lot of families. Not all, but to too many, brother. And that was in the black community for so many years, so many decades. And what did, what did they say? Oh, there was that nigga. Or this, this nigga. Or I'm going to shoot this nigga. I'm going to sell dope to this nigga. And the more you say that word, the more it becomes part of your vocabulary. What ends up happening is, it's just like how the white man was doing it to the black man back then. They were using it to dehumanize him, brother. And that's what, for the most part, is being used today in America, man. When people use that word, ah, that nigga just got smoked. Like I said, I'm going to kill that nigga. Fuck that nigga. We're using it nowadays to dehumanize one another. Because now, it's not a person, brother. It's just a nigga, man. And to brothers that are using that, you should really think twice about how much your ancestors really went through to now be able to accept that word and think it's okay. Because only you as elders can stop your kids from using it. And how do we stop using it? We need to stop using it. Myself, I think it's been six weeks, two months. I stay away from that word, brother. I stay completely away from that word. And I was the guy before saying, ah, it's not that big a deal, but... Nah, that's wrong. It's wrong. And 20 Latinos especially, so-called quote-unquote essays, and you're using that word, brother? Nah, I mean, you're lost, man. People sometimes tell me, Gil, how can you be this anti-gang guy, this and that, you've lost homies, you've done this, and, uh, and now you're the one talking against it, like if you're talking down the life. No, I'm not talking down the life, brother. But to me, I'm going to rephrase that question to you. How can you sit there... Say you're an essay, especially from Southern California. Say you're a South Sider, but you act black, you talk black, you dress black. It's it, 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 the biggest hypocrisy 
And people will tell me, oh, you guys just want to be black, this and that. And I don't even get that. Just because I will say certain things that, that some uh, African-Americans may find, may find offensive, brother. And the thing is, with me, ah, man, I'm, just, I'm just speaking the truth, or at least what I know to be the truth, brother. There's too many essays, they use that as an excuse. They use the excuse that, oh, well, that's the neighborhood I grew up in. That's how it is in my neighborhood. Well, you know what? In Alabama and Mississippi and Texas, there's a bunch of white boys in middle America. There's a bunch of little white kids using the same word, brother, talking the same way. And they weren't raised in South Central. They weren't raised in Watts. They weren't raised in Long Beach. It is plain and simply because the media has fed it to you. The rap videos have fed it to you. For the very long time, Latinos from, I remember the movie Cobra, uh, the Sylvester Stallone, he goes up to these essays Bumps their car, gets out, punks the guy, rips his shirt off. Essay's looking like a dummy, dude. That's one uh, scenario. Next one, you go to one of the most famous movies uh, of our generation of comedy. It was Friday. You had a uh, big little Joker and Joker, and they were just personified the most extreme part of being a Chicano gang member. But it was comical, brother. And it's become to a point where people have become embarrassed. But they've seen all these rap videos, they see all these rap movies, they see all these movies, they see the media. And now it's come to a point where they say, oh no, it's where I grew up. It's not where you grew up, brother. It's what you think is cool. And what you think is cool is acting like a black man. And that's, and that's, not, and that's not even no disrespect to a black man. Because most black men don't act like Acting like a black gang member. That's what you guys are doing, brother. And to me, the hypocrisy comes, especially if you're from South Central... Compton, Watts, Long Beach, and you're speaking that manner, and all you do is speak and, 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 because I see these videos now, and it's a joke, brother. Every time they get into a fight, what up, my nigga, my nigga? I'm like, what, what, what are these guys, man? And the worst part of it is that every single one of those essay gangs in those areas have black enemies, brother. And a lot of those guys, they put NK. Nigga killer, let's stop bullshit here. That's what they put. They put NK, nigga killer. And to me, I'm looking at somebody putting that on a wall, Wait a minute, homie. Nigga killer? You got the same dress. You got the same talk. Shit, you guys even rap like Crips and Bloods. It's, it's coming to the point where if it goes this trend, it's, man, homie, you're going to still claim the South another 20 years? You're your homies because it's going to be their Crip or Su Whoop, homie, because that's where it's going. It, it's, it's a shame because at the same time that you're going down that route, you're losing your culture, man. It's hard for me to sit there and listen to somebody say how Mexicano they are, how gangster they are, how Sureño they are, but they act completely black, homie. They act completely black, and what I know is going to happen is eventually, as the generations go a little bit farther, a little bit farther, the morals and values, even though it's a gang structure, even though it's a, let's say, criminal entity, there's still a certain morals and values that comes with acting like a Chicano gangster, a Cholo gangster, whatever you want to call it, brother. And the more you guys continue to act in that manner, the more your morals and values are going to go, brother. And that's just the truth of it. I'm not saying that all black gangs don't have that type of moral value, but the structures that they have, it can't even compare to what we got, brother. But you're going to lose that. You got, you've got, you got paleteros being attacked. You've got uh, vendors being attacked by some African Americans, even some essays, but by some a, a lot of young African Americans. Why? Because those guys are lacking that moral and value structure, brother. You go down that route, if you guys are in your teens, early 20s, how do you think your kids are gonna be, man? How do you think your grandkids are gonna be? Is your, is your little, is, is your, you, do you want your grandkids and your kids to be out there saying, hey, nigga, nigga? Nah, brother, that's an ignorant word, brother. That's an ignorant word that dehumanizes. That's an ignorant word that real, we hear all this stuff about, oh, the white supremacy, the white, the, the racist uh, world in America, systematic racism. Well, systematic racism is in that word, brother. That word, has not been taken over by you guys to make you guys feel more powerful. That word has been kept in your community to keep you fooled, man, to keep you ignorant, to sit there and keep on dehumanizing one another so you can keep killing one another, so you keep sending poison to one another, man. That word has not been taken over by us. It was given to us. It was given to us by a bunch of racist white people back in the days, but we continue to use it. It used to be where it was just the brothers, but now the S's are using it like nothing, brother. 
like absolutely nothing. And I'm going to tell you something. You guys are wrong, man. You guys are wrong. I know you'll say, ah, homie, you don't know. It's a new generation. It's a new style. Nah, but there's certain things that, yeah, I get. Certain dress codes, certain stuff. That it is. It's generational, brother. But when you cross that path and when you get upset, okay, this is my thing. If you're going to say it with your homies and you're saying it here and there, it is what it is, right? I don't say it anymore. And, I, and, I, and anytime somebody's around me now, they start saying it, I'll be like, one, two, three. I'll start counting how many times they're saying it because I'm trying to get them to understand how often they're saying it. And hopefully, this will kind of spark somebody to be like, hey, but I do say it too much. But... Let me get back on track. When you go and it's your go-to word when you're upset, you got a problem, brother. If you've if you're rapping and you can't rap if you're an essay without saying that word, you got a problem. Because the problem is, it's almost like you don't have confidence in your skill as an essay, as a Latino, as a Chicano, whatever you want to call it. It's almost like you don't have confidence in that. So what? I gotta say the N word. Why? Because I gotta sound black. Why? Because black sells, homie. So it's almost like. We're selling out. You young guys, you're selling out. But you may not know, you may not see it now, you, but you're selling out. You're selling out your culture, you're selling out your people, and you're selling out your kids, man. But your kids are going to look at you and see how you act, see how you talk. I took a picture, this was about two years ago, right? Uh, this was at my sister-in-law's funeral. Uh, these are all older homies. Uh, we're in our... Late thirties, early forties, some in the early fifties, and maybe more up to sixties, man. And I look at this picture and I think, all right, that's what the older homies look like, man. You know, this is us, brother. And I only think now, can you imagine what they're gonna look like at twenty years? Can you imagine some eighteen-year-old guys now? They're all so whooped at the game, homie, or corrupt at the game, because that's what it is. It's a gang thing. Those guys taking a picture in twenty years, and they're all essays. You know what it's gonna look like? Probably all full of braids, probably some crocodile shoes, probably all sagging. It's not going to be an essay thing, brother. It's not going to be an essay thing. It's going to be a straight crip and swoop thing. You know, so to me, it's just look at your surrounding, look how people are talking, and think, is this how I want my children to grow? Because that's going backwards, homies. That's straight up. If the brothers want to do it, because I'm a brown man, I'm just sitting here give my opinion it's, and that's all this is brother this is just my opinion this is one man's opinion man but as a brown man that's been around the game for the last 30 years homeboy you guys are losing your culture man you guys are taking a step backwards man instead of moving forward i'm not saying you gotta be a hey, homes hey, yes, hey, every no nah, i'm not saying that at all brother but at least stop acting like another person man like i said Everybody wants to act black, but nobody wants to be black, homie. So that's just my two cents on it. Um, you guys agree with me? Leave a comment. You guys disagree with me? Leave a comment. Other than that, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell for the notification when I go live. And you guys have a great one. Late.